Oh, I feel bad about my sin. Stop thinking about it. It's been settled a long time ago. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's right. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven an old account was standing for sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. I went unto the keeper and settled long ago, long ago. forget this time. <laughs> All right, good morning everyone. So, next week we're going to have visitation at 2990 Little Wood Lane at 10:30 a.m. as we always do. And I uh, hope you can make it, Lord willing. Um, next Bible study is going to be Friday 8 p.m. at Pastor's place. Um, you can ask him for his address so you get you can find out how to get there. Um, our memory verses are going to be, let me let me read it for you, Psalms chapter 12, verses 5 through 6. And let me just get there. Psalms chapter 12, verses 5 through 6. And the verse, verses read, For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Amen. So these verses are basically saying, verse 5, because the poor and the needy are so oppressed and they're, the needy are sighing, God's going to stand up and now he's, gonna, he's saying he's going to protect them. Verse 6 says, the words of the Lord are pure words, but not only that, that they can be purified, as we all know about the King James Bible. So it, the important part is they can be purified and they have been. Um, and so that, those are our memory verses. I'm actually, let me give this a go. Um, I tried memorizing the whole chapter, yeah, go for it, and it might not be successful, but let me try. So Psalms chapter 12, and it'll start probably like this. Let me, let me just uh, get my thoughts in order real quick. Okay. Okay, so let me just, give me the first word, because I, I forgot the first word. Okay, 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 I got it. Help, Lord, for this godly man ceaseth. I cease, I cease today. Um, uh, for, the, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Um, they, speak, they speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Uh, the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said, our, we, with our tongue will we prevail, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? And this is the verse that I just read. Um, for the for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Verse number six. Um, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt keep them from this generation forever. Um, the vile, the wicked men walk on every side when the vile, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. I don't know if I got anything right. Okay. So I might, I might have gotten a couple things wrong there. Uh, That's okay. 
okay. It's just ESV. That's okay. <laughs> it, it was the NIV, Pastor, oh, if you sorry. didn't know. <laughs> so, with, uh, with, with the rocky start, I still got it, but got I it. hope I can encourage you guys to memorize the verses every week because it will add up, I promise you. Don't ask me to quote Psalms chapter 1, okay? I'll, I'll work on that next time because <laughs> we already did that. Okay. So just to mention, our summer camp is going to be on from July 30th to August 4th, if I remember correctly. Please let Pastor know if you can go. I encourage you to go because it was a spiritual life changer for me. Amen. And you'll see people, as or Christians as young as 10 years old, praising the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to be saying amen louder than you are. You're going to, get, you're going to be convicted. They're going to be preaching at you because they're more spiritual than you are. Um, so I encourage you to go let Pastor know either today or next week because next week is going to be the deadline. So please let him know if you guys want to go. Uh, we have to rent the space and all that. So there's a lot of logistic, logistical things that go into um, getting the camp space for our church. So as you can see, these missionaries aren't just playing around. They're not just taking your money and living a nice time in Chile. They're going around ministering to people. They're running Bible classes. So please don't forget to pray for them. And that's where your money goes, actually, when you retire. And you go, Pastor. <clears throat> All right, I don't know if this will be uploaded online, so we'll see how it turns out.
knees he almost shouted at the angel these are the sinners saved by grace the host of them who called upon the savior washed in the blood and justified by faith and oh he leaped up from his knees oh i can go in with these and i can go in for my heart is free from sin i've been washed in the blood everlasting life to win i can rejoice i shall lift up my voice i can sing that i can go in oh we thought that there could be no hallelujahs and no christ for this lowly band of people by the world despised but as the scene of heaven opened up before his eyes he saw the martyrs and the prophets and the host of heaven rise and they sang i can go in for my heart is freed from sin i've been washed in the blood everlasting life to win i can rejoice i shall lift up my voice i can sing that i can go in i shall oh i messed up right there and i shall lift up my voice i can sing and i can sing i can go in i can go in thank you lord thank you that i can go in amen thank you lord thank you all right, we're going to take up the Lord's offering. If Brother Sean can come forward, take up the Lord's offering for us, and then ask God's blessing upon the service with, with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the beautiful singing. Thank you for everyone that uh, was able to make it to church today. I pray that you would uh, have traveling mercies for anyone still on their way. For yes, anyone God. who wasn't able to make it today, Father, I pray that you would have your will in their lives. Father, I want to thank you so much for those that were able to make it out to street preaching as well today. Thank you yes, so much God. for the soul that got saved Amen. from the repentant and believing heart. Put his faith in you and only you and your shed That's blood, it. Lord, that you shed for him and his sin on the cross to get him to heaven, Father. I pray that you would lead him and guide him in all the truth and the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray that you would do the same thing for everyone in this room today, Father. I pray that you would fill this room and everyone in it with the Holy Spirit of God, and that you would soften our hearts to the preaching today. I pray that you would fill Pastor with Holy Ghost unction and spiritual power, you, that Lord. he would preach every jot and tittle that you've given him yes, to preach God. today, Father. Nothing from him, nothing from anywhere else, but no. you alone, Lord God. Amen. I pray that you would have it to bless all of the hearers, all of our viewers online. I pray, Lord God, that you would uh, have your will for each and every one of us as we go back out into the world this week. And above all, I pray, Lord, that you would even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yes, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Jeremiah chapter 51, please. Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah chapter 51. In this passage, the prophet Jeremiah, he is proclaiming God's judgment upon the nation of Israel. And he also proclaims what a certain dragon named Nebuchadnezzar will be doing. 
Now, his name varies throughout the Bible. In here, he's called Nebuchadrezzar. And Nebuchadrezzar, what he is likened to is a dragon right here. And we know who is the dragon in the Bible. And this dragon, he would do, he would do whatever it takes for anybody here to not hear the word of God. For anybody here whose heart will be closed-minded to the gospel, to the preaching. That dragon will do whatever it takes to tear up your life and this church and your loved one's lives because why? He doesn't like it when souls get saved. He doesn't like it when you pray on your knees. He doesn't like it when you start to set your affections on God, not on this earth. He doesn't like it when you worship Jesus Christ, not worship Him, the God of this world. He don't like that. So He will do whatever He can to destroy this church, to destroy your life and your household. But the reason why so many Christian churches have a fallen to apostasy today is because they are not aware. They are not alert. They are not prepared of what the devil will throw to tempt them, put some kind of trial to attack them. And because of that, that's why churches today, the Lord is turning his back on them and trying to find a church somewhere in San Francisco Bay Area, some church that he can still use to proclaim the gospel, to proclaim all the counsel of God, to show somebody how to get saved from the flames of hell. And so, what, who do you think he's going to put in his target list in San Francisco Bay Area? One of the churches you don't think he's going to set his target on is you? Look at right here at verse 34, Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 34. The Bible reads, Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon hath devoured me, he hath crushed me, he hath made me an empty vessel, he hath swallowed me up like a dragon, he hath filled his belly with my delicates, he hath cast me out. We see Nebuchadnezzar, how he treated the nation of Israel and how he devoured them and just destroyed them all. But that is likened to Satan on how he does with your life. I mean, you feel like that right now at verse 34? Do you feel right now you've been devoured? That you've been crushed? That he sucked all the blessing and the joy out of your spirit that now you're an empty vessel? And he swallowed you up like a dragon. My title of today's sermon hopefully will be a blessing to you. Blast of the dragon, let's pray. God, my Father, wash away my sins with your holy blood. I want to thank you so much for salvation through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for the blessing of your Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for your grace and mercy upon me and upon this church and upon many other Bible believers around the world. God, I pray that as you wash me clean in the blood of the Lamb, that you'll please empty out all the gunk from this vessel and now replace it with the filling power of your Spirit. And I pray that the Spirit of God will overflow this weak and poor vessel here that will come out, fill up my cup, Lord. Let it runneth over against mine enemies and Lord God, I pray that the Holy Spirit will take full control today. Let the dragon, do not let the dragon take control of this service. Let God, the Holy Spirit, take control in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 My first point is complete destruction. Complete destruction. Look at the first part of our verse. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. So notice right here we see complete destruction from this type of the devil where he just devours and destroys. And you got to realize that Satan is known as the destroyer. Now people don't think about that. People don't think that Satan is a destroyer. Why would Satan target me? I'm just an ordinary church member. You know, I'm sure he's going to attack the pastor there. I'm sure he's going to attack some big Bible-believing missionary or worker over there. But you see, that's the problem. Because you think like that and you don't think the devil right now has his sights on you with this, sniping, with this sniper gun. You don't think that he has his sights on you right now. That's why he's been shooting at you without you even knowing that you've been shot and injured and bleeding. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You know how Satan takes advantage of you? When you're ignorant. When you're ignorant. 
It's so easy in this machine called America that we live in. We wake up in the morning, we drive to work, we take care of our bills, we take care of our children, we think about our schedule, we try to find a relaxed moment in our lives, and then because we're just so caught up with this machine system we live in, because we're so busy here, busy there, and not thinking about anything else, that's why we're ignorant that right now, Satan has his target side on your back right now, and his finger was ready to pull the trigger at any moment, and you failed to put armor on your back because you were just too busy, you were just too occupied, you had better things to do, and you were ignorant of what Satan's doing. Your problem is that you're ignorant, thinking that you're not the person the devil will destroy. But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how unimportant you think you are. And let me add this too. It doesn't matter how spiritual you think you are too. Because you think that you're so spiritual, you prayed up, you read the Bible, you avoided all sin, that you don't think the devil has his target on your back. Boom, then he's going to get you right there. Because what did the devil do? The devil, he targeted the most righteous people in the Bible that Jesus even said they were righteous. At Matthew chapter 5, he said, if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, these guys were like pastors. These guys were like deacons. These guys were religious leaders who fasted and prayed, who abided by the biblical rules. And, the, and what did Jesus call them? He said, your father, the devil, ye serpents, ye generations of vipers. They were the ones Satan was able to target. It doesn't matter if, you're, if you got all your doctrine straight, your King James only, your dispensational, your Bible believing. It doesn't matter if you're a hundred times more spiritual than me. It doesn't matter if you're like the Apostle Paul. The devil, he's got his target on you. It doesn't matter how spiritual you think you are. And it also doesn't matter how unimportant you think you are. You got to think about this. If Satan destroyed David, David, are you as spiritual as David? You know, David, he read the Bible early in the morning and late at night. You know, Daniel, he prayed three times a day while being second in charge of the whole kingdom. That's really busy. Are you as spiritual as those guys? No. But if Satan was able to destroy David with his sin of murder and adultery, and with Daniel with receiving the sacrifices of worship from Nebuchadnezzar, if Satan was able to destroy them for his purpose, what makes you think he won't destroy you? You think that you are not as much of a high target, that you're not going to get tackled by the devil? If Satan can destroy these spiritual men of God, you better believe it. He can definitely, more than capable, he's not weak, he's more than capable to destroy you. It's only by the mercy and grace of God giving you breath and God putting boundary, boundaries on the devil that you and I are still alive, still able to come to San Jose Bible Baptist Church to worship God, to pray to Him, to read the Bible. It's only by the mercy and the grace and the breath of God that you and I can still lead souls to salvation, be a blessing to some brother and sister in Christ in the church. It's only by the mercy and the grace and the breath of God that Satan didn't cut all the hell loose on you and that we didn't close down this church, that we didn't end up in sin, that we didn't go apostate. You better believe that Satan, who is he? The second most powerful being in the universe? That Michael the archangel, he would not even dare bring a railing accusation against him. All he could do is just say, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. You know why? Because that's how powerful Satan is. You don't think Satan can make you mess up in something right now? You don't think Satan, he's got the power right now to do something where he can make you sin, where he can make you walk out on God? He can do that right now. But you have been ignorant, haven't you? You haven't prepped up yourself, haven't you? And because of that, Satan, he went on your blind side, your vulnerable side, didn't he? And then he kept shooting that and shooting that and shooting that so that he can get you. Satan's not dumb. He's been watching every step, and he's looking at, where are you weak at? Where are you weak at? And it's only by the grace of God I have to shelter myself and pray, oh God, please no, please no, not that one. Please, Lord God, protect me. 
Why do you feel so relaxed as if Satan won't really destroy you? Because didn't he try to destroy Jesus on the cross? Didn't you see how Jesus Christ was tortured? Didn't you see how Jesus Christ was beaten, spitten upon? His beard was plucked out. He was stripped naked. He was crucified and tortured on the cross. You know what that was? That was Satan's last chance to topple Jesus Christ before Jesus Christ can save all of mankind. So Satan poured out his wrath, his fury. God let Satan have his way with Jesus Christ. That Jesus even cried out, my God, why have you forsaken me? And God let Satan all loose. Now, you think you could have accomplished what Jesus did on the cross? Far be it. Far be it. If I was in the Lord Jesus Christ, shoo, I would not die for anyone out there. I'd say, you know, you guys just let me down. You guys just live in sin. You keep re being rebellious against me. Why would I even die for you? And yet Jesus did that for you and I. And you think you can accomplish what Jesus did in fighting Satan? If you don't think so, what makes you think you can fight Satan now then? If you can't go through that, what Jesus went through, you got to realize this, that was Satan's attack. If you can't go through that, what makes you think you can face Satan right now. It's scary. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 through 10, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuse them before our God, how frequently, day and night. You know what the problem with Christians is? Whenever you yield to temptation, whenever you yield to your flesh, whenever you yield to sin, you know what happens? When you do that, listen, this is important to hear, all right? This is important to hear in this part. When you yield to some kind of sin or flesh or temptation, you don't think that Satan will destroy you yet. That's why you feel like you can keep doing that a little more. That's, right. That's why you think that you can slide and get away with it. Now you see why people won't preach about this and why we're going to be very unpopular. The reason why is because Satan, he doesn't want you to prep up. He wants you to be ignorant, sit down and not pay it and not know how to prepare against the attacks of Satan and how many Christians have Satan targeted and shot dead on the floor and yes, they may come to the house of God. Yes, they may read the Bible. Well, yes, they may pray. Yes, they may have avoid all kinds of sins. But there is a vulnerable point that Satan has kept shooting them. And they're like bleeding sheep on the ground. Don't you know? I mean, this verse says he accused the brethren day and night. If you're not prepped up day and night against Satan, let me tell you something. Satan is prepped up day and night accusing you. Had it not been for God's mercy, we would have been torn, a torn apart a long time ago. So you got to realize this. You're playing a risky game right now with the stuff that you're putting in your mouth, whether it be alcohol, whether it be cigarette smoking, with the stuff that you're watching, whether it be something ungodly, whether it be something perverted, whether it be something wicked, whether it be some kind of evil stuff, bloody violence, gore, etc., etc., I mean, you're playing with fire right now. The people who you're hanging around with, and then when you hang around with them, the stuff that you talk about that is not godly, the jokes that you laugh about that are actually not funny to God, the, the conversation that is not holy, the cursing that comes out of your mouth, the things where you start to uh, criticize things in the Bible, yeah, that happens when you're around that kind of crowd. You know, see, you don't think that Satan, he is tearing you apart right now. You're playing a risky game. You know what you're playing with? Fire. That's what you're playing with, fire right now. You know why? Because the de devil has been, that dragon has been blowing fire at you consistently, and you've been burning up, but you just kept playing around in that fire. In Luke chapter 22, verse 31 through 32, it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. 
but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I see in this passage that when Satan wants to have you, the thing is that's more that's so important so that Satan doesn't have you is that your faith does not fail. That you prepare and you arm yourself. Strengthen thy brethren. That you strengthen yourself. You got to realize this. If you think that you're okay right now in your Christian life, let me tell you something. You're in trouble. Did you just hear what I just said? If you think you're okay right now in your Christian life, you're in trouble. Amen. You know why? Because Satan, right now, he's watching you as a target. And in order, look, this is just common sense. If Satan has his scope on you where he's about to shoot it, you know what the common sense is? Put on a helmet. Put on protection in your back, in your head, everywhere, so that he don't shoot you. But you know what you've been doing? You've just been too busy, too occupied, too ignorant not to put on any armory thinking that you're okay because you didn't hear any gunshot, you didn't get shot yet, you didn't get shot yet, and that's why you're just walking around thinking that you're okay, but then Satan, he's had that scope on you ever since. And the only way to arm yourself against that attack of Satan is it that you strengthen yourself, you prepare yourself. But how many Christians have I seen not prepare themselves? You know, when there are things going on, like such, such as the enemies attacking me, such as things that happen in our church, you know, a lot of things, you know what I do? I prep up for that. I prep up for it. And then when the incident happened, that way I don't get discouraged. That way I don't get worn out. That way I don't complain. That way I don't say, oh, you know what? I think I should stop coming to church. I don't think like that when I prepare and predict this is normal. This is what's going to happen. I've seen it so many times in my life, in other Bible-believing churches. So I refuse when something bad happens in my life or in this church that I'm going to quit coming to the house of God, quit reading the Bible, quit praying, and quit serving God, and quit fellowshipping with the brethren. I I absolutely refuse. But can some of you say that? Maybe not because you haven't what? Armed yourself. You haven't predicted that to happen. It's normal. How many times have you heard this preacher say it until it finally sinks in your head? Your greatest enemies can be fellow Bible-believing Christians. That's right. How many times have you heard the pastor saying that? So if someone rubs dirt on my back, you know what happens? Oh yeah, like this. I've I known that before. The Bible says right here that in order for Satan not to sift you as wheat, that you got to strengthen yourself. See, that's why it's important. Prepare beforehand. Have you been, so you know what? Your prayer life, have you been praying hard recently? Lord, protect me from this. Lord, protect me from that. Have you been willing to accept the next levels of suffering before? I was. Because I was, that's why I wasn't able to get phased out by the attacks. You got to be willing. You got to say, Lord, I'm willing when this attacks happen. I'm willing to go through it. But you need to give me the grace to go through it. Have you prayed hard for God's protection? Have you been willing to accept harder suffering? Did you study more of the Bible? You know how Satan attacks you when you don't know much about that book. And when you don't know much about that book, then when something bad happens in your life, all you can do is ask, why God, why God, get worn out and get discouraged. But you know why I wasn't able to quit so far yet? Because I've known too many verses already. I've studied enough of that book where I know Romans 8, 28, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and all the promises of God. And because of that, I know too much about it. So I can't go back and give up on God because I know too much of that book already. But some of you haven't, right? And if some of you haven't, that's why Satan, he's what? Destroying you. That verse says, complete destruction. I guarantee you this. If you don't get your nose in that book, if you don't come to church, if you don't pray, you are easy prey for Satan yeah. to attack. Amen, Let's look at the second point. Complete delight. Complete delight. You know what Satan wants to do? He's not content just to destroy you. You know what Satan wants? He wants to be happy. He wants to revel in joy in your misery. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to just enjoy seeing you miserable. He wants to dance all over you. 
He's not just happy destroying you. He wants to enjoy destroying you. The after effects. That verse, second part of our main text, right? Jeremiah 51, 34. I hope your hand is still there. This will be our main text in the sermon, so we'll con consistently go over there. In that passage, the second part of the verse, it says, He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicates. That's what Satan wants to do, see? Not only does he want to destroy you, he wants to suck the joy out of you. All that happy juice that you got in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to suck you dry. And if he can't drink any more out of you, he's going to take a straw and find whatever little drop is left over and suck the joy, 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 joy down in your heart. And if he could suck out the Holy Spirit, had it not been the Holy Spirit sealed till the day of redemption, he would have done that to you a long time ago. Because he wants to fill his belly with your blessings, with your joys and privileges. What are you going through right now? Is Satan right now sucking you dry? Is Satan right now drinking all the joy out of your heart right now? Now turn to, keep your hand there, keep your hand at Jeremiah 51. I want you to turn to Job chapter 1, please. Job chapter 1. Job 1. You know, whenever I read the book of Job chapter 1, I know this. I know better than just go headstrong, go up front against Satan. I know better than to do that. You know, already, you know, already in the preaching and teaching and what we're doing for Jesus Christ, I already know I'm in dangerous territory. You don't think that I'm afraid every day what's going to happen to me, what I might do, what I might slip up in, what the devil might get me on? I think if I haven't predicted or thought about that, I would have quit the ministry a long time ago. You got to realize what kind of enemy you got. This is not someone you mess around with. This is somebody, if he had his way, he would have destroyed you right now. You know why? He wants to kill you. Didn't you know that? The Bible says he is a murderer from the beginning. If you were an Abel right now, if he had his way, he would have killed you right now on the ground. Right. Send some Cain over and kill you on the ground right now. Look at Job chapter 1 and verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, You think that he's going out on vacation? <laughs> from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. See, he's seeking whom he may devour. The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? You know why God asked him that? Because he knows Satan saw Job. Satan was so busy walking to and fro on the earth. As thou consider my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou... Now look at this, see? Satan's going to point out what blessings you got. And because you're still, you still have those blessings, Satan knows that if I took away that blessing, that comfortable lifestyle, that thing that makes him or her happy, if I take that away, then that person will curse God at his face. Look at this part. Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Now look, look at this verse. Meditate upon this verse because right now include your name here. Hast not thou made an hedge about Gene Kim and about his house and about all that he hath on every side in this room, in this church of San Jose Bible Baptist Church, God? Does it, don't you see him having all that? These people saying, I love you, Pastor. I pray for you. And they come to soul winning, street preaching, visitation. And then they come to church and they give the money to provide. You know, Don't you see all that, God? Haven't you done that for Gene Kim? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. You see that, Gene Kim, Lord? I mean, all those people getting saved on the streets and on the houses, and then uh, people online subscribing and getting saved, converting to King James Bible, believing dispensationalism. Hast thou not blessed the work of his hands that he worked so hard? And his substance is increased in the land. See that, God? You're increasing him more and more. Those subscribers aren't slowing down. You see that, God? More people are getting baptized. You see that, God? More money is being provided in the offering. 
but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath. You take away, God. You take away Brother Jack, Brother Stan, Brother Sean. You take away Brother Tom. You take away Brother Emilio. You take away Brother Brent. You take away all that he hath. And he will, Gene Kim, will curse you to your face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Oh my goodness, behold, all that Gene Kim hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. And what did Satan do? Went forth from the presence of the Lord and then he bam, 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 everything else in San Jose Bible Baptist Church and online and on Gene Kim's house. Bam, 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 bam. And then you know what? The more blessings, you got to realize this, the more that God blesses his church, and you're, we're all happy. Don't get me wrong. I am so happy with the fruits that we've got. Amen. amen. I'm so happy about that. But I don't know if I told some of you, okay? I only probably told a few of you, and I only indicated it. Sometimes I would tell you, I hope it doesn't last for a while. I hope this is not too good to be true. I hope that this is forever. You know why? Because I've been so many years in the ministry, and I know this. Whenever God's blessing and blessing more and more and more, Satan, he starts attacking more and more right on its heels. Yeah, right. You don't think so? You think that we got the victory, that we finally did it now? We're not done fighting yet, folks, until the rapture. That dragon is on your heel. Just because you got healed of cancer, just because that God provided you with miraculous money to feed you still, just because God provided some miracle where your loved one gets saved, just because God provided somebody to come to church and be a blessing to you, the devil's not done yet. The more delights you gain from God, the more opportunity for Satan to suck the joy out of your life. You gotta realize. First Timothy chapter four and verses one through two, it says, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know what Satan does? What he wants to do is that, now don't deny it, I'm pretty sure nearly everyone has gone through this. Satan puts a particular temptation, whether big or small, in your conscience. And then when you yielded to it a little bit, didn't you yield it to, to it a little more after that? And then you yield a little more, a little more. Now what happens is at first it bugs you, all right? If at first it bugs you, especially when you're reminded through Sunday preaching again, oh yeah, that's right, oh, I feel uncomfortable. And you get on the altar and you get right with God. But you know, see Satan, now he's just gonna keep pounding and pounding. And now that you hear the preaching, now it's, you've gotten used to hearing it. Now it goes one year and out the other because your conscience already felt convicted before, but you're getting used to the feeling. And Satan, now he keeps abusing that temptation and that fleshy sin on you. And then now your conscience is getting more seared, more seared, and more seared. And then what happens with one day of skipping Bible reading becomes four weeks. One church service that you skip becomes six months. And then one sin that you yielded to, now you think that it's not a sin anymore and you're just so used to doing it. And you see, Satan, what he did was he seared your conscience with a hot iron. He got you because he kept blowing fire on you like a dragon and as that fire keeps going down on you you know what happened now it became hard 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 it became hard and more that's what satan did with you and you know how satan you know how he gets you his purpose remember this his purpose is not to make you his purpose is not to make you an addict his purpose is not to make you a murderer his perfect is his purpose is not to make you a false prophet his purpose is to compromise with you oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, i'm not saying you know stop coming to san jose bible baptist church i'm not saying that but, you know, you don't have to come to those certain meetings right here, right? I mean, look at that. You're so tired and so many things are going on. And, you know, things going on in that church and in your life. And you're going to feel so uncomfortable. And then, see, he's what he's doing. He's compromising with you. 
That's how we got apostasy in our churches. You know how? Compromising. He always compromises with you. He doesn't make you flat out worship him. He compromises with you so that he can finally get you. It's to compromise. That's why you, you became so blind and ignorant you didn't see that attack, didn't you? Are you now reflecting carefully on your heart and your life and you start to see which compromises you made? And now those, those things which was compromised at first now turn to be a conscience seared with a hot iron sin now? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11, put on the whole, did it say part or whole? Whole armor of God. That ye, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If, okay, pastor, I got 90%, I'm 90% good, 90% holy. Yeah, I may have messed up here, but it's not a big deal. Boom, then Satan got you. Because that verse says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the, of the devil. You cannot attack that dragon unless you're fully armed. You won't, you won't survive. I don't care if you got the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and then you got, your, you got your armor breastplate on, and you got all this on. When Satan blows that fire, it's going to drown you. And if there's a foot that's free, then he's going to burn off that foot. It's a dragon you're facing. It's not a little spute of a fire. Pew, pew. No, he's blowing fire all hell down on you. So, which, okay, you may have been armed, you may have been prepared in Bible reading, you may have been prepared concerning your busy schedule that you won't compromise skipping church, you may have been prepared for that, but there was that certain area that you didn't arm yourself, and, you, and that's what Satan has been blowing fire on, right? And you didn't expect that to happen. You didn't expect that this minor thing that, okay, it's not a big deal, it's not going to hurt my life, it's not going to hurt my family, it's not going to hurt the church, it's not going to make me backslide and quit out on God. But no, Satan, he has been using that, hasn't he? And he's been working on that minor area, and that minor area turned out to be a major bruise and major burn and even a life-threatening situation. You know what's the best question to ask yourself? Okay, this is what I do, okay? Before I say and do and think something, you know what will prevent you from sin, from doing some mistake, from doing something wrong? Before you say, think, or do something, ask yourself this question. Did the devil just use me right now? Boom. Boom. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Did the devil just use me just now with, that, with those words? Uh, did, the, did the devil just use me just right now? Thought, boom. Oh, uh, blah, blah, thought, blah. Oh, uh. did the devil just use me right now? Boom, 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 boom. And then what? You know what? You will be prepared. That will be very helpful. That will be very, very helpful. That prevented me many times from doing something dumb, something stupid. You know, I... I've seen so many Christians, and then these so many Christians that I tried to disciple and lead and pastor. And then some of these Christians would go, well, pastor, you know, I don't know about this. And then, you know, I, how is that wrong? And blah, 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 blah. And then I would try to stress about, you know, well, you got to think about, you know, <laughs> what Jesus thinks about it. You got to think about the testimony in front of brethren. And you got to think about your life on how the world will see you. And I try to explain, and the person doesn't understand. And then, you know what I should have done? I should have just simply said this way, you know, before you you said those words did you ask yourself did the devil just use me right now when you say that it solves a lot it's so easy to make excuses you know when I was growing up in church you don't think I know all the verses to justify myself you don't think that I had good spiritual reasons not to do those things and then to justify my actions my words and my thoughts it's so easy to do that but you know what softened my heart this softened my heart immensely Whenever I argue uh, with a pastor or, you know, with my parents who try to raise me right, you know what solved it many times? It's so easy to argue back, especially with education, that the devil has made your knowledge even smarter so that you can outwit somebody who's trying to raise you right, to pastor you right, to direct you right, and so easy to educate yourself, to 
block all the things and make loopholes. That's the reason why you can justify any sin today in America and in the world. You can justify any sin because you know why? Oh, I'm smarter than that ignorant Christian who knows nothing but the Bible. That's right. So easy to do that. You know what softened this person's heart that prevented me from going down that path when I studied in Berkeley and then I had the justification to do whatever worldly thing? Did the devil just use me right now? And then boom, all the excuses drop. All the justifications and good reasons drop. Because I know deep down inside my heart, the reason why I said those things, thought those things, and did those things is because I did it because I wanted, my flesh wanted to do that. Rather than what Jesus wanted me to say. What Jesus wanted me to do. You know why I'm stressing this question? Because this was so helpful to me. It changed my life completely. And you need to do that with yourself. If you don't do that, I promise you this. If you don't do that, you haven't prepped up that weak area that the devil will aim and attack. It saved me. It rescued my life. And I know that it will to you too. The third point, complete dismissal. Complete dismissal. He hath cast me out. He hath cast me out at Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 34. Complete dismissal. You know what Satan did now? Now he sucked the life out of you. That dragon, man. Thank God he's going to burn one day, amen. Thank God we're going to get raptured and we don't have to sin anymore, fall into Satan anymore, amen. I can't wait for the day. You know what? We don't have, you know what would be great? What would be great is that in the middle of the preach and we don't have to worry about fighting the devil again when Jesus sounds that trumpet voice and we go up and we can finally drop our swords, drop the, honor, the armor, stop being all armed up and getting ready. We can just finally relax. Rejoice and shout the victory together and see that devil burn forever. Amen. Now, Satan, he destroys you, right? That was point number one. Completely. And he rejoices in your misery. Completely. Now, he dismissed you. He completely ended your life permanently. How many pastors have I seen quit? Missionaries quit. Evangelists quit. Christians not coming back to church anymore. Christians going back into the world and not serving God anymore. How many? I'm sick and tired of that. I am so sick and tired of seeing that. Because we already got enough apostates. We already got enough sinners. We already got enough backsliders. We don't need any more. You don't need to help out Satan and fill up his army anymore. His army is big enough. Look, man, we don't, you don't need to do that anymore. I'm sick and tired of seeing that. You know, what prevented me many times from quitting is also seeing how many other men of God have quitted, threw in the towel. Satan have ruined their life because he found a weak area that he abused upon. I'm so sick and tired of seeing that. And by the grace of God, and you heard me repeat this over and over again, and I will repeat it again. By the grace of God, I will not quit pastoring this church no matter what. Only by the grace of God, I... Will I not quit? And I told you before, over and over again, when the Lord grew our church and then he dropped it to one, I will not quit by the grace of God. Amen. When he grew to a hundred and I dropped to ten, I will not quit by the grace of God. I will not quit. I will not quit because I'm sick and tired of seeing churches closing down and those churches now are being replaced by Catholic cathedrals. Those Christian churches are now being replaced by Buddhist temples. Those Christian churches are now being replaced with Muslim mosques. I'm sick and tired of seeing that. Amen. By the grace of God, this place will not become a cultic room ever. It will be a Bible-believing it will be a Bible-believing place where we will worship and come before the house of God. And if you're not going to come, then I'm going to keep coming and keep the Holy Amen. Spirit flowing in here. That's right. Praise the Lord. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 3, please. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Deuteronomy chapter 3. You heard me say it over and over again, only by the grace of God. You know why? Because I'm scared of that devil. Because I'm weak. I'm flesh. Oh, pastor, what do you mean? Okay, you try tangling with that. Hasn't that dragon been already ruining you already? Amen. At least I have better sense. <laughs> well, it's only by God's grace I am what I am. See, I'm not as spiritual as you. I'm not as clean as you. 
I'm not as holy as you. I'm not. You know why? Because I know my weakness. And I know what Satan's going to get me on. And when you think that you are holy, you are spiritual, you are Christian, wow, that's something that the devil will tear you apart on. And man, I don't want to think like that at all. You know how easy the temptation the devil gets me on that you're a Bible-believing pastor, so you should know better, you know better, you're better than so-and-so, you can teach better than that pastor over there, and look at that, how God blessed you and reward. You know how easy it is to think like that? You know what prevents me from falling into that? You know what prevents me from falling into that? If it wasn't for God's grace, I know I wouldn't have reached that far. And if I don't keep saying that and reminding myself that, then you know what's going to happen? What's going to happen is I'm scared when that dragon comes out and eats me up. It's scary. You should be scared, folks. Never think, never think you're in an okay position, in a holy, right Christian position. Never think like that. Always remind yourself, I am what I am, only by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 23. And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth? that can do according to thy works and according to thy might. I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain and Lebanon. You know what Moses did? He beseeched God for him to go to the promised land. Now, was Moses as wicked as the children of Israel? No, this guy was a... Can you imagine this poor pastor taking care of like a million people? How much of a headache that was? I think that I get enough headache. Wait till I get one million people, right? I probably quit the ministry ten times over. <laughs> but Moses, he committed a quote-unquote minor sin. He disobeyed God's command where he was supposed to speak to the rock so that water can come out. But instead, he hit the rock with the rod. And that minor thing was enough at verse 26. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said... Unto me, let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this manner. You know what happened to Moses? He was done. He was over. Satan got him on a small thing, and that small thing was enough where permanently, permanently, permanently damaged him for life. He cannot enter the promised land. It's enough for Satan to permanently dismiss you, no matter how much you think what's major or minor. You know one thing I learned when I started to learn about what's major and what's minor? When I started to think like that, that became more dangerous for me. When I started, oh, that's major, oh, but that's minor, it's okay. And you know, when I think like that, when I say minor, Satan automatically saw that and said, oh, let's turn that into something major. So I stopped thinking like that. I started thinking, you know, it doesn't matter what, all right, the devil can get me anywhere right there, and I'm scared. But First John chapter 4, verse 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know what you need to do now? You got the Holy Spirit power in you, and what you need to do is to start using it. That thing has been dormant and asleep all this time. You need to start using the power of the Holy Spirit in you. What is the power of the Holy Spirit? That verse says love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, but you have kept that all closed in and you have not let the Holy Spirit let that flow out of your heart. And when you start letting that flow out of your heart, oh my, 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 then the Holy Spirit can take over the power in your life and you're ready to fight that adversary. But when you keep that thing closed and dormant inside, expect that dragon to tear you apart. There was once an artist who was also a great chess player. And this artist, he painted a picture of a young man who was playing chess against Satan. In the picture, Satan, he made a deal with the man that if he won, the man would become his slave forever. And in that picture, the man, it, he was in despair. It looked like he was about to lose because the devil had only four moves to checkmate him and permanently dismiss him. And all chess players who saw that painting, that picture, thought that the devil won. However, there was an aged chess master named Paul Morphy, and he wanted to see if that was really the case, that the devil won. And as that old chess master, 
kept looking and looking at that picture. He pictured himself as that young man who was fighting against the devil. Four moves till checkmate. The devil could win. Everyone thought the young man lost until the old chess master suddenly cried out, young man, make that move. That's the move. And other people start to see and they found out that the old chess player, he found a combination move that would completely turn over that heaviest attack of Satan into the heaviest comeback victory. Now, I don't know right now, I have no idea right now, and thank God you don't know what's going on in my life, I don't know right now what kind of the heaviest attack that Satan has thrown on you that he has been throwing on me as well. But I can tell you something, that can be your greatest victory. The greatest attack from Satan can turn to be your greatest victory. Right. You know why? Because in, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know what you are right now? You, right now you are head to head with Satan. And Satan, he's about to win, isn't he? With four more moves, right? And you're about to throw in the towel. You're about to yield into sin. You're about to quit out on God. Today can be your greatest comeback today and you can take that chess piece and turn the tables on Satan and checkmate him and get the victory. Right now the chess pieces are on your hand. That table is, front of you, is in front of you. The devil right now is putting on the facade that he's gonna win and he's laughing and dancing over you and he's saying, I got you, give up on Jesus Christ. Right now, you have that chess piece. It's up to you, after preaching is over, to pick up that chess piece, get that on the altar, and turn the tables on the devil, and get the victory. I'm going to tell one thing to Satan today, as he's about to checkmate on me today. Satan, by the grace of God, I take this chess piece, and then I cry out, checkmate, and you'll still see me here next Sunday. Amen. Every head bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. You can make that chess move today. Please feel free to come down here on the altar's floor and pray, or you can pray in your seat. You can even kneel on your chair. However way God leads on your heart, you can pray. This is your chance now to pray to the Lord on what he's checkmated you on. I don't know what he checkmated you on. But today can be that day where you will get the victory. Get him today. Get him today. Now look at your, now look at your weak areas now that you didn't put your armor on. Look at that right now. You need to, because if you don't, then you will remain ignorant. Look at those areas right now and surrender them to God and repent and renew and start prepping up what you can do so that that attack won't happen again. And when you do that, walk home in victory. And let me also add this. The fight's not over. You may get the victory today, but guess what? Satan's going to play chess with you again, a new game. It's not over until God says it's over at the rapture. Right now, you need to arm yourself. You need to prepare the attacks of Satan. And don't let him win. If any of you here don't know how to get saved, if any of you here don't want to burn in hell with Satan, I mean, Satan, he wants to win and let you burn in hell forever. If you don't want that, then ask yourself this question. If you were to die today, are you 100%, 100% sure you can go to heaven? Ask yourself that question. You might say, Pastor, I don't know 100% if I can go to heaven. Well, let me tell you something. You can get saved right now. You can get the victory over Satan right now today and go to heaven with Jesus Christ. Don't let him win and let him take your soul to hell. You might say, well then pastor, I, I need you to tell me how to get saved. How do I get saved? It's easy to get saved. Just three steps, three steps to know how to get saved. The first step is you gotta understand sin. Did you sin against God? You might say, oh pastor, I admit it. Good. Then 
you got two more steps to get saved. That's good. If you're honest to admit, I've sinned against God. And because of sin, I'm going to burn in hell forever. If you have that humble acknowledgement that I've sinned, and because of sin, there's a burning hell forever, guess what? There's hope for you. Step number two. Jesus is God, and he died, buried, and resurrected so his blood can wash away your sin. Sin, of course sin takes you to hell, but that blood of Jesus can erase all your sin, wash away all your sin. That's why he died for you. See, only by the blood of Jesus can you go to heaven. You know, people make the mistake of, I have to get baptized, I have to go to church, I have to pray, I have to be a good person, I have to obey God's commandments to go to heaven. If you think like that, then you're not going to go to heaven because it's only the blood that erased all your sins, not all the good things you do, see. Only what Jesus did on the cross saves you. Do you understand that now? You say, okay, pastor, I understand it, and I believe it. Good. If you believe only the blood of Jesus can save you, then step number three, step number three is all you have to do is say that to God then. That's it. Ten seconds or less, all you have to do is say that to God. Just simply tell him, God, I realize, step number one, I've sinned. I'm going to hell. So I repent. I'm a sinner. And then step number two, that's why, God, I'm going to only believe in that blood of Jesus to save me. I'm not going to trust in myself by living a clean life, going to church, anything. I'm going to only believe in your shed blood to take me to heaven. Isn't that easy? Just 15 seconds or less and you're done. You might say, well, pastor, um, I don't know how to say it to God. And I want to do step number three right now. I want to say to God, that I'm sorry for my sin and I'm only believing in the blood to take me to heaven. Can you help me out? Sure, I can help you out. I can help you say it to God. I'll give you the words on how to say it and all you have to do is repeat after me. And you don't have to say it out loud, all right? No one knows who you are. We're not going to call out your name. I'm not going to point out who you are. Every head is bowed and every eye is shut. No one knows who you are. You can say it right now to God inwardly. I'll give you the words on how to say it, and you can say it inwardly, okay? You can say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I repent. I believe Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected. So his blood can wash away my sin. I'm only trusting in the blood to take me to heaven. Not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you would bow your head and close your eyes just one last time, one last time, 60 seconds and we're done. I promise 60 seconds and we'll finish the whole thing. If you would just bow your head and close your eyes one last time, please. All right. If, you've, if you said those words right now, Pastor, I just repeated those words after you right now. Could you uh, slip up your hand real briefly right now? Uh, we're not going to point out who you are. I'm not going to point out who you are. No one is looking around. No one knows who you are. If you could just slip up your hand real briefly right now, that's it. Then that will be great. Okay, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Here's your chance now that you can proclaim your salvation. I hope that some of you also, uh, if that you got saved, and not only saved, also if there are some things in your life that Satan has been attacking you on, you've surrendered that on the altar and things got right. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for the blood. There is power in the blood. It saves souls and it can save our life right now as we're fighting the devil. By the grace of God, Lord, this church will continue and we will be here next Sunday and the people online will still see us and they will see a new video tomorrow of us proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and Bible-believing truth. You get the glory, Lord. We love you, and I'm begging you to protect us, and don't let the devil win.
Dear Lord God, we're going to be the first to admit we're not strong. We're not the greatest church. We're one of the least kind of churches. I'll even admit I'm the least kind of pastor. The only reason why that you've raised us up and you raised me up is only by your grace. So I'm begging you now, Lord God, protect us from the wiles of Satan and don't let him win. Don't let him have his way. To you be the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone without works through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.